Hello. Welcome. Yesterday I came across a piece of art by Albin Palasek titled A Man Carving Out His Own Destiny. It shows the portrait of a muscular man. It looks like an uncompleted piece. With only the top portion done, and the bottom portion undone. But what really arrested my attention is that the sculptor's hammer and chisel are in the hands of the man being sculptured. The man was sculpturing himself. The man was carving out his own destiny. The sculptor, knowingly or unknowingly, had portrayed the problem faced by many Christians. As we seek to grow in personal holiness, we also try to sculpt or mold ourselves by ourselves. We are seeking to carve out our own destinies through our own personal efforts and willpower. And we look just as ridiculous as this block of marble. Trying to sculpt itself? Is holiness something we strive for? Or something we accept by faith and rest in? Before we continue, I have a favor to ask of you. If you have not already subscribed, please support our work by doing so, and share the video with family and friends. Thank you. I have often heard young Christians say. I want to be a good Christian. I am going to stop fornicating, drinking, and clubbing. I will focus on my Bible studies and pray a lot. These are all very lofty ideals and I encourage everyone to do so. But holiness is not adhering to a set of rules. It is not about. Thou shalt not fornicate. Thou shalt not steal. Holiness is about conforming to the character of God. Nothing more, nothing less. As children of God, we have been predestined to conform to the likeness of His Son. Paul says in Romans 8, 29. For those whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And he goes on to say, in 2 Corinthians 3 18. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Paul says we are being transformed. That means transformation is a process. Until we conform. That is the end product. So, we are being transformed daily until we finally conform to the image of Christ. Who is doing this transformation? Religion will tell you, you must do it yourself. The Stoics will tell you to look within yourself for the strength to do it. Christ says, look to me. The writer of Hebrews says. For God's will was for us to be made holy by the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ, once for all time. Holiness, therefore, is by faith alone, and by Christ alone. We are transformed by the Holy Spirit. We cannot sculpture ourselves into the likeness of Christ. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. Just as a block of marble cannot transform itself into a beautiful statue. Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 5:23, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is Paul's prayer. May God himself make you holy. It is only the Holy Spirit who can make us holy. But wherever you go, you find Christians struggling to make themselves holy. We write resolutions every year. We may succeed in changing some outward conduct. We may begin to read our Bibles more. We may even have a regular prayer time. We may quit drinking and smoking and gossip. But the harder we try, we cannot change our hearts. Our hearts remain hard and desperately wicked as always. That is something only the Holy Spirit can do. And I will give you a new heart, and a new spirit I will put within you. 
And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh, Ezekiel 36 26. That is why David cried. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me, Psalm 51 10. This is not merely changing some conduct of ours. It is a complete renovation of our hearts. Something no heart surgeon can do. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. How then does this come about? In the pursuit of holiness, however, the believer is not a passive object like a piece of marble. God has given us a mind, a heart, and a heart. And we are to use these to respond to the workings of the Holy Spirit. We are to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in the process of transforming us into the likeness of Christ. The writer of Hebrews says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy, without holiness, no one will see the Lord. We are to train or discipline ourselves to be godly. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather train yourself for godliness, 1 Timothy 4:7. We are called to put to death the traits of our sinful nature and clothe ourselves with the traits of godly character. So we see that the road of holiness has two components. It is one that is totally dependent on God and also totally dependent on personal discipline. How is this so? How can we be simultaneously responsible for pursuing holiness and totally dependent on the Spirit? How can God assure us that He Himself works in us to will and to act according to His good purpose, and then instruct us to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling? What responsibilities has God given us to be holy? First, to renew our minds. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, Romans 12:2. God is not calling us to fill our heads with knowledge to memorize the Bible and regurgitate it. He is saying this knowledge of truth should lead to godliness, Titus 1.1. The psalmist wrote, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you, Psalm 119.11. Second, we are to watch out for temptation. Jesus said, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation, Matthew 26 41. This is another area of discipline we must do. We must continually watch, or guard, against temptation. It is not only the temptation in our environment, but the one inside of us too. James says in James 1 14. But each person is tempted when he is lured, and enticed by his own desire. There are evil desires in our hearts. They are always seeking ways to express themselves. These desires are not only about lust or the desire to masturbate or watch porn. There are other subtle desires like intimidation, manipulation, and so on. Third, we are to choose obedience. God wants us to be experts in purity, honesty, compassion, and forgiveness. When confronted with a situation, you have a choice, either. Either to succumb to the temptation or to flee. Joshua 24:15 says. Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Choose to read and meditate on the Word of God. Choose to watch godly movies, read godly books, hold godly conversations. The choice is yours to make. Finally, we are to pray for holiness. We are to call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, Proverbs 2-3. We are not only to pray for understanding of the truth in our minds, but also for the rooting and building of biblical convictions in our hearts. As we discipline ourselves to do these things, let us always be mindful that. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth, 1 Corinthians 3 7. God bless you.